Hey everybody, it's Galmadex, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going to be playing another Remix Artifact Draft. Without further ado, let's get into the pack one pick one. We've got a pretty sweet rare here. We have not been able to do the red-white equipment deck yet, but that could be a pretty powerful one with a card like Jorkadeen. Two mana for a 2-2 two, two trample, it gets plus X plus X whenever it attacks, where X is the number of equipment, and it can draw a card every time that you trigger that ability with its power being four or greater. So if you have two equipment on the board, then that will auto-trigger the ability. But even if you just have one equipment and you attach it to Jorkadeen, you're probably drawing a card every time you're attacking with them. So pretty powerful card. It is restrictive. You got to be red-white specifically, but we haven't played the archetype yet. So I'd be happy to hop over there. Alternatively, we've got like Ashnod's Harvester here, which is solid uh, as the most flexible card in the pack. Or Hover Wings would be great in a Jorkadeen deck, but... I think I'm going to try out the equipment strategies because we have not done that. And now we have Barbed Spike, which is the perfect follow-up. It's one of the equipment that comes with a creature. Most of the equipment in the set are like that. And that is pretty good because that means you get to have a lot of equipment in your deck while still having a nice like 15 to 17 creature count, keeping that number pretty high. So I really like the dual roles of all those kinds of equipment like the Barbed Spike and the Hex Gold Halberd. We are really just living the Jorkadine dream here. There are other great aggressive white creatures like Arcbound Mouser. When there's a lot of artifact creatures in the format, Modular is a really good mechanic, making sure that the power and toughness you get off this card sticks around. And Mandible just this year again with so many artifacts in the format is often like a 2 mana 3 2, sometimes even 4 3 lifelink on certain swings. So it's an, another just great aggressive white creature, but we will take the equipment cards over them just for the huge synergy there. Pick four, Rabbit Battery is technically another equipment, but Jorkadine does care about the number of equipped creatures you control, not the number of equipment you control. So until you reconfigure this and attach it to something, it's actually not that good with Jorkadine. And it's just a one mana, one one haste. I don't love the reconfigure cost on it either. Just not a huge fan of Rabbit Battery. I mean, we could take Sibling Rivalry as like a finisher, but I guess that's the only other on-color card anyway, because we're going to be aggressive enough. We don't really want Ornithopter Paradise for ramp and fixing. So yeah, I guess we still just take the Rabbit Battery, but I'm not super high on that card. I am pretty high on Welding Sparks. I think it's great in this format. It's going to kill pretty much anything uh, at instant speed for three mana, because you are going to have a few artifacts on board almost every time, so it's five plus damage really easily. Big fan of Welding Sparks. Pick six. We've got another equipment that comes with a creature, but it is five mana, which is quite a lot. Boros is very aggressive. Five mana and four to equip is just a little too much to be particularly good. I'd rather take like a Glint Sleeve Artist, and this can give us two different creatures to start putting those equipment onto. It's pretty nice. Pick seven. A Renegade map for fixing, but I'm pretty sure we're going to stay just a streamlined two-color deck here where just a nice little one mana 2-2 two, two haste will be a bit better. Pick eight. All right, Tempting Apple is just like a better version of the sibling rivalry. You get to steal your opponent's biggest threat, try to kill them with it, and if that doesn't quite find lethal, you can still throw the apple at their face for the last few points of damage. On the drop is good too, um, but on the drop is a card I really like playing in decks that have a lot of Creatures that spit out multiple creatures off of just one card. And there are a few in this format, but we don't have any of them yet. I mean, I guess we have one Glint Sleeve Artisan, but I really want to be a heavy on Fabricate themes and making little tokens to use the on the jobs. Pick nine, um, pretty much unplayable. Fiery Intervention is just a really slow removal spell. It's way less efficient than so many other commons. Salivating Gremlins is just a little too inconsistent. Renegade Map and Dross Forge Bridge are not that exciting because we don't really want to be splashing for this deck. Uh, pick 10. Once again, pretty unexciting. I guess Brute Suit, we can crew with a Servo or something, but I'll probably end up cutting that. And same with most of the rest of the stuff we'll be picking up in the end of pack 1. So for pack number 2, uh, we got a solid rare here. It's a little bit slow... Um, but it is essentially drawing you an extra card every single turn. And if it's a card you don't really want to play, you can just get a Power Stone instead out of it. So yeah, it's a fine card draw engine if the game does go long. Tezzeret's Touch is a really awesome card, super fun one. We've played one deck with it before, and uh, it's just really easy for this card to be good. If you just play it turn three on a clue token or something, 
Like, that's perfectly fine. You got a three mana five, five, and you're beating down. Uh, but there's a lot of cards that synergize great with it, like the Indestructible Lands. Now you have an Indestructible 5-5. Five, five. There's the Flying Lifelinking Vault Scourge, being able to make a 5-5 five, five Flying Lifelinker is insane. And there's the Oaken Siren with Flying and Vigilance, making a 5-5 five, five Flying Vigilance is awesome. Just wanted to talk about Tezzeret's Touch, because I think the card is really cool, uh, but we're not really in that direction. We are pretty locked in on the Boros here, where we're super happy to take this uh, Bladehold War Whip. There's a slight argument to take the Thraben Inspector, because that is an excellent value play. And it gets better when you have a lot of equipment to make sure that the body remains relevant later in the game so that your 1-2 can actually be like a 2-2 or a 3-3 depending on what equipment you have on board. Um, but I think War Whip is just so perfect for the deck we can't take the risk of it not wheeling. It is infinitely more likely to wheel than 3 but Inspector, but still not anywhere near like 100%. People can definitely splash around in this format. There is a dual land in every single pack, so we're just going to take our our signpost uncommon here. Pick three, we can take an Ancestral Blade here for yet another equipment, or we can take our three bit Inspector. I don't think either of these will come back, and they are both definitely the best cards for this deck. They're both quite good. We are at one, two, three equipment right now. I guess a fourth with Rabbit Battery. We don't have a lot of two mana creatures here, but we don't have a ton of one mana ones either, so Inspector would be pretty great. I think I'm gonna just roll with Synergy again and take Ancestral Blade. Sad to have to pass up on some inspectors here. Uh, Upriser Renegade could actually be kind of scary in here. Any of our equipment that come with a creature immediately are a modified creature. So this could be a 2-mana 3-3 three, three, pretty consistently. And I think I would like more 2-mana plays than 3-mana plays right now. Although a couple of these 3-mana plays are um, non-creature spells that are probably getting cuts. Yeah, this is the actual creature curve here. Yeah, we don't have too many at any mana cost. We can take whatever's the strongest card. Artisan's definitely more consistent. Rangator's a little cooler. I mean, look at his haircut. Come on. Pick five. Um, pretty much nothing. Ridge Scale Tusker's insane, but we're not green. Yeah, that's the only card that's really exciting out of here. We just take Ashnod's Harvester. We can play a two mana three one, worst case scenario. Pick six. Dang, yeah, some really good green stuff showing up here. This pack is too late for us now. Um, there's literally nothing playable for us here, so I'll just take a Terrarian, which could be fixing something tremendously strange happens. Don't really want the 5 mana 4-4. Four, four. They're just the 5 mana creature in general. It can be a 5 mana 5-5, five, five, but usually you play it as a 5 mana 4-4 four, four haste. Ember Keeper. We start moving our equipment around, then... The non-token creatures that are dying make one ones. I guess that's more likely to see play than the Renegade map. But it's certainly not particularly likely. Okay, Scrap Work Mutt's basically 100%. Great way to make your draws consistent, ditching whatever you don't need to find what you do. Um, and I like it a lot better than Demand Answers, because Demand Answers is like a Scrap Work Mutt that doesn't come with a body. Kind of. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're playing anything here. Probably not playing anything here, but technically a second sibling rivalry could go into the deck. It's at least on color. And we are at 21 playables here. So very close to the 23 non-land cards that we need to get a deck. This deck's going to be so low mana curve and so aggressive, we probably only want to play 16 lands. So we're going to want 24 non-land cards by the end of the draft. And we've got quite a few cards that are a bit filler that I like to improve. So, not the greatest position moving into pack 3, but we know that we'll have a deck no matter what happens here, even if it isn't going to be an incredible deck. Oh, how disappointing is that? Open up Tezzeret the Schemer pack 3 when you are completely different colors from that. Super sad, I would have loved to get to play with Tezzeret in one of these drafts, and the one time I opened Tezzeret, it's in pack 3 and we're in other colors, so we don't get to play with Tezzeret. Well, we can take a Thraven Inspector for a great value play, or a Scrapwork Cohort to get multiple bodies on the board to put equipment on, too. Untethered Express is pretty great as well. It's a lot of damage in pretty quick. Um, I really like cluttering the board with more bodies, though, with so many equipment running around anyway. I don't think we need the vehicle to stay relevant. I'm going to go for the Cohort and just really get a lot of uh, creatures on board. So here's one of the awkward things about red-white as a color pair in this format. It has two 
different archetypes that are both like very competitive with each other where you can get a card like Jorkadine that's like, okay, take all of the equipment. And if you take all the equipment, you're getting a bunch of cards like Bladehold War Whip and Hexgold Halberd that are non-artifact creatures that come with an equipment or Ancestral Blade. Uh, but then there's also Red White Modular off of Arcbound Shikari that's like, you want to be playing 100% artifact creatures. So that's the one thing I don't like about this color pair is there's like two different builds and they don't really work particularly well together. Um, so you can be in the exact color pair for Shikari and still be like, well, it's not actually that good in this deck. I'm just going to take the great removal over it. Or you could be in red, white with a bunch of modular and open up, you know, Jorkadine or Bladehold War Whip and be like, that's not actually that good for this deck because I want all artifact creatures. So that's, that's the big awkward thing with this color pair is it has two builds that are kind of contradictory here. Um, but I digress. Let's just take a Thraven Inspector here, finally get our first copy of that. Pretty happy to do so. We've passed many copies. So it's nice to actually have one in the deck. Uh, pick five. Uh, I think Combat Thresher's probably fine. Three mana, one, one, double strike. When you're playing an equipment deck, playing it as a three mana, one, one, double strike, drawing a card and then loading it up with equipment could be decent. I mean, the Halberd isn't good with it, but the Barbed Spike and the Ancestral Blade are. The Rabbit Battery is as well. Plus one, plus one there. That's at least three equipment that actually add to its power. We'll go for the double striker. And it's a great top deck in the late game. It's actually a big old 3-3 double strike. All right, similar to Scrapwork Cohort now, we'll take the old tech Cloud Guard. This is just a flying cohort. It can't unearth, but the value of being evasive, being a flying threat, makes up for that. Pick seven, Mortar Pob. Is Mortar Pob. <laughs> Mortar Pod's another uh, equipment that comes with a creature. This one just like... Uh, sacks itself to do one to something, but still playable. There's plenty of um, actually playable one toughness creatures in the format, so I've get, been got by Mortar Pod a few times. Also, pretty good with the Ember Keepers if we do continue down that direction. Again, the Ember Keepers only care about our non token creatures, but then I can like Mortar Pod onto a Scrapwork Mutt, sack the Scrapwork Mutt that makes a 1 1, put it on the 1 1, sack the 1 1 as well. Do stuff like that, which can be cute. I'm just going to rare draft an uncommon here. Uh, I'll take a puzzle knot I don't think we're playing. Take a tomb raider, we probably will. And some dual lands. Alright, we're on 46 cards here, so we get to cut 6 cards. Uh, I think Tempting Apple is just a better version of Sibling Rivalry. Um... I'm going to try to keep the creature count super high, so I wouldn't mind one of these Ambitious Assaults. We're probably cutting one of them still. Uh, brute Suit as well, the vehicle. We're an equipment deck, not a vehicle deck, and that's not a particularly good vehicle anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six. This would be six non-creature spells. So like 17 creatures, six non-creatures. Yeah, we could run double Assault here, especially if we cut a land. Then we could still be like 18 creatures double assault. I'm actually pretty okay with that. Actually cut a land here. We're at uh, 14 red cards, 8 white, so cut a white source. And then we just need to cut two cards. Ember Keeper is one of our weakest creatures, um, but it does have some fun synergies, potentially again with like Mortar Pod, where we can sack a non-token creature with our Mortar Pod and then get a 1-1 Spirit and then have another creature to sack the mortar pot again later so that's kind of cute i think everything else though is a little more consistently good by itself i guess not the harvester we can't unearth the harvester such so as the two mana three one with no other abilities probably a little worse i guess we cut the gremlins as well one of these three drops sure let's keep the ember keeper mortar pod combo but i could definitely see ember keeper being one of the weakest cards in this deck even with the amount of equipment we have to modify our creatures. But we'll find out. I don't think these other two are particularly good either. You know, we could meet down the middle here. We could just keep one Ember Keeper. And if that one con consistently sucks, then <laughs> we'll know whether or not we should have had the two or we should have had the zero. Depends on, uh, on how it plays out here. So we are on 16 land, super aggro deck. I think we can call it a deck here. 
All right, here's a look at the final deck list for today. We're on a red-white equipment deck. We took a pick one, pack one, Jorah Kadeen, and never looked back. This card is busted if you can get a few equipment on board to where it's attacking as a two-mana 4-4 four, four trample and drawing you a card every time it attacks. Super, super nasty stuff and really easy to get it to draw you some cards. You only really have to play a single equipment and then just equip Jorah Kadeen with it with the Ancestral Blade or barbed spike or anything like that but if you're lucky and we could be lucky because we have so many uh, equipment in this deck we could just like go ancestral blade and hex gold halberd or blade hold war whip or barbed spike and just have enough equipped creatures on board we don't even need to equip jorkadeen himself to start drawing all the cards so that's the biggest bomb the biggest build around we have but the rest of the deck is just a bunch of great aggressive creatures and equipment on curve we've got a lot of creatures here as well very high creature count so that we can end the game with some ambitious assaults to make the whole board a little bit bigger and draw a card or with tempting apple we can steal their biggest blocker throw it at their face and of course, as always, for any deck, we've got a little bit of removal with a Citizen's Arrest and Welding Sparks to help clear a path as well. So pretty standard equipment aggro stuff here. We'll see how it all plays out for us as we head into the gameplay. All right, here we are on the play for game one with a curve out. We don't have the double white for Citizen's Arrest, which could be a little awkward if we need to kill something immediately, but it's good enough removal. We can cast it much later in the game and still be happy with it. All right, we are playing against white. They do not have a one drop though, which is nice. The one mana one one life link with modular, a pretty great, pretty great way to start the game in white or three, but inspector. So we're just happy they don't have anything early here. Um, it is more damage to play barbed spike and equip it with haste than it is to post combat barbed spike. So we'll go for more damage here. Boom. But then if we want to Ambitious Assault, it'll be more damage to unconfigure next turn. So we probably will unconfigure an Ambitious Assault, because we'll draw a card off of that and get a few points of damage in. So we just cycle it away for damage plus card draw. Yep, I don't have double white for Citizen's Rest anyway, so we may as well. Uh, unattach. Send all in. Trade the battery into the Opportunist and draw a card hit for eight. get more damage in this way there's the second white source to citizens arrest their next blocker and i guess it won't be lethal we can hit for four next turn if all they do is play a blocker i was gonna say citizens rest the next blocker and hit for lethal nope Ooh, especially not when it's wicked wolf card is great fight something when it hits the board for a nice two for one all right ember keepers solid here um, yeah, I don't have to Citizen's Arrest right now, um, because they don't have a food to give that indestructible, so if I just make this a uh, 3 power for a striker, they already can't block profitably. I could play Eberkeeper pre-combat just in case I'm missing something here, but it looks like I'm not, so we're fine. I guess if there was an instant speed one mana artifact spell that makes a food, then we'd have to do that. Alright, I can clear out one of their blockers and they're dead. Oh, definitely with Tomb Raider. Definitely with Goblin Tomb Raider. I don't even have to clear out a blocker for that to be lethal. But we'll do it anyway, just in case once again I'm missing something and I'm a complete doofus. But they don't have the mana to eat the food right now for life gain, so... Super dead. We're going to start things off 1-0, and heading into game two. All right, here we are on the play for game two. That's a good start, just being on the play, period. The hand's decent. I wouldn't call it a great start, but it's fine. We got the Renegade with a Mortar Pod to make Renegade attack as a 3-3 on turn three, which is pretty spicy. Uh, but uh, it is going to be two drop, two drop, four drops, not like the perfect curve in the universe. Especially when Mortipod doesn't attack at all. It's a 0-1. Okay. Now I could Gremlins first, because I can Gremlins into Cohort. Is that actually more damage than just Mortipod hitting for 3 immediately? Hmm. Well... We didn't hit land 4, so we don't know... For sure if we get to 
play Cohort next turn. So I'm going to actually just do this and get the Renegade swing in. And this also gives me a better board state to Ambitious Assault if I need to cycle this to draw a card to look for the next land. Our opponent's on green-black, though, which means we're, they're on the food deck. Yeah, they already have two food tokens. They can just draw a card off Savvy Hunter, or they can keep them around, and they have a ton of life gain set up here. That... Tough Cookie is a good enough card that I'm really tempted to trade Thraven Inspector and my germ into that. I lose out on a lot of damage, though, when I have Ambitious Assault in hands, and Tough Cookie doesn't do anything until they have excess mana to activate those as 4 fours. Yeah, I guess I won't. I guess I'll keep the wide board with Ambitious Assault. Okay, we did hit the Cohort mana. Do I send in the whole board and Assault if they block? Let me kill the Savvy Hunter? Or do I just Cohort to set up the bigger Ambitious Assault next turn? I'd probably just Cohort. Renegade's not going to get any bigger, and Renegade for Savvy Hunter is already a fine trade, so we will offer that and probably just get 3 damage in. We do get 3 damage in. Now here's Scrapwork Cohort. There's the Hollow Scavenger, so that blocks is a 5-4 if they sacrifice one food for it. Pretty massive deal. I was going to say, I'd be surprised to see any attacks from them, but they actually would be decent for our opponent. Um, Because I don't want to lose anything to I Ambitious Assault. Just send in the squad and see how this pans out. They can almost definitely know that we have something that buffs the whole board, and there are three different cards in this format that do so. All of them get plus two power. There's on the job for plus two, plus one to everybody. There's the um, the affinity one that gives plus two, plus one to everybody, and there's ambitious assault, which gives plus two, plus zero to everybody. So uh, this should be obvious enough for my opponents to uh, play around it no matter what. And they do. They find their best block against any of those three cards, which is to make sure Savvy Hunter doesn't die. But everybody else does. Alright, since Tough Cookie's gonna die anyway, they sack it to draw the card, which I'm actually pretty okay with, because that means Cohort is sticking around, and I don't have to uh, unearth it or anything to keep it on board. I did draw into a land, so I can use Mortar Pod to finish off the Savvy Hunter. Is that worth it? Yeah, with no other Ambitious Assault in hand, it is worth losing a 1-1 token. Or even the Cohort, but I have other stuff to do with my man. I don't want to unearth it just yet. At least get the gremlins on board first, then unearth it, and then that's a huge gremlins attack coming up. Alright, well they had to sacrifice all of their food just to draw cards instead of gaining life, so that keeps them down at 8 here. Which feels good. They're still going to have plenty of ways to be able to, like... Uh, recover, turn things around in the late game in this kind of archetype, but now they don't have any of them on board. They are up to the variance of their draws. Oh, Sky Sovereign is gross. Um, yeah, kill the non-unearther, that makes sense. I only have... One red source, so I can play Combat Thresher and something else. I think I do need to set up a wide board state here. So let's do that. I'm playing the Combat Thresher first, so if I top deck a land, I can also play Gremlins instead of Ember Keeper. Okay. 
Now they're at five, and there's always a chance I just mortar pod them to death at this point. Even if they can stabilize with enough blockers here. But no, Sky Sovereign is really gross. Any creature that's a removal spell and a creature off of one card is really good. This is a vehicle, so it's not as absurd as it could be. You do have to crew it. But it's a removal spell and a vehicle, and it's repeatable removal every single time it attacks. It's killing another one of our creatures. Sky Sovereign is incredible. That is probably the best pack one. Pick one in the format since it's colorless, and it's a Mega Bomb. Definitely was the best pack one pick one during Kaladesh Remastered. And that is where we became enemies with the Sky Sovereign. Alright, opponent's doing some digging. Cracking a blood to look for something here. The trail of crumbs for a food. They are very done on board. If that's all. Okay, another haste threat. Makes it even more likely we find the kill here. Um, I'm going to crack a card, look for an artifact to play with Gremlins, or just hold all the Mortar Pod mana. I probably need to just hold the Mortar Pod mana, just in case two extra damage is the difference between lethal and not. Okay, they're just going to eat the food, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that is dead. We are now 2 and 0, oh, heading into round 3. Could have gotten really fancy if I wanted to. I guess I could have equipped the unearth card with the mortar pod to sacrifice it and then unearth it. And that way I would be attacking with just as many creatures, but now the salivating gremlins would be like a, a six power trampler for the turn. So that that could have been reasonable um, if their plan wasn't just like a single removal spell. But then if their plan was a single removal spell, they could kill the gremlins, take the rest. They might have still just been dead anyway. So I don't know. That's an interesting alternate line for sure. Here we are on the play for game number three. Love being on the play, but don't love having four white cards in the hand with no white source, one of which costs double white. I don't think we can keep that. This we can keep. Don't have uh, double red this time for Visions of for Exit, but we have Scrapwork Mutt to do some digging. In fact, with the Scrapwork Mutt to do digging, I'm almost tempted to get rid of Visions, because we're a really aggressive deck. We need to play to the board, and Visions doesn't. I don't want to ditch the creature. I don't really want to ditch the removal, either. I don't want to ditch a land, because even if I ditch a 4-drop, I'm trying to get to 4 mana for the other one. This might be wrong, but I'm going to hope that Scrapwork Mutt is enough value getting rid of what we don't need to make up for losing on the late game card draw engine. This game goes really long, then that is a bummer. That means that the... Uh... Mm, you know, I'm going to do this anyway, because if we hit a fifth or sixth land, we really don't want it. And there we go. We dug the fifth land out of the way. Anyways, if the game goes really long, we're going to be bummed that we got rid of visions. And... When our opponent starts with a lifelinker immediately, the game might go really long. I guess I could exile that before they play any other creatures. They don't get the modular onto them. But I can still exile it later. Exile doesn't trigger trigger the modular. But the faster I exile it, the less life they gain off of it. It's still just a 1-1 one, one, though. I don't want to blow the only removal spell I have on a 1-1. One, one. All right, well, they are turtled up very well now. Got a 0-3 crab to hold off the scrapwork mutt. Boiling Pirates, oh yeah, they're a really defensive deck. Zero three, a Stunner, a Life Linker. This is the snappest of snap trades if they send that in. Alright. Well, it does look like a matchup where um, I 
think I'd rather draw a card than get a 1 1 servo, so I'm gonna put the counter on Artisan so that we have a modified creature. Um, yeah, I'm about to draw another card. I'll play this land out. Oops, even with Scrapwork Mutt. Does look like a matchup where keeping visions would have been pretty good. Sorry, I can't speak today. I keep getting sidetracked. I'm stunlocked by myself. It's a cage in here, in this mind. Hex Gold Hover Wings. Ooh, I wish I had one of those. That'd be awesome in this deck. All of your equipped creatures get plus one plus zero. Okay, well this Ambitious Assault is not going to be very good, but... It's kind of our only option here. we got to cycle and find some more stuff. You can at least Citizens Arrest the Flyer to keep Old Tech Cloud Guard around, and then even if they find, like, a Disenchant to blow up Citizens Arrest, they don't get anything back. That's probably worth it. Keeping the only flyer on board seems like a thing. And I'm very glad I played the land last turn, because if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to arrest plus assault this turn. And I guess technically they could turn anything into a flyer with their hover wings, but it's going to soak up half of their mana. It's three mana, so even if they hit their land drop next turn... That's half their mana. If they don't, it's more than half their mana. I still like Citizen arresting the uh, token here. They can't get anything back. And they have to soak up a bunch of mana to have a flying blocker. Apologies for chair sounds. I'll get a new chair eventually that will not make angry sounds. When I'm finally done moving that'll be like august i might move early maybe july we'll see uh oh eyeballing my creatures here one of these last two cards some solid removal or are they just gonna equip hover wings or something Ooh, recommissions pretty solid on the thraven inspector Get a 2-3 drawn on their card. I'm one mana off from that combat thresher being very big. So I don't want to play it right now. In fact, I kind of want to discard Rabbit Battery to draw a card to try to get to the land a little faster. But I could also just Rabbit Battery and hit for 4 instead of 3 in the sky, which is pretty fine too. Just, I have to wait a turn either way. It's just if the next card isn't a land, I have to wait two turns if I don't scrap work mutt. Be patient here. I'll wait for land seven. Alright, they've only got one card in hand, but they have two clue tokens, and now they can get their flying blocker up. Ooh. Tempting Apple. I have no blocks up, they get to swing for like... 10? I guess 9, and then if they want to throw the apple at me, it's another 3. Interesting. So no blocks on the flyer? I guess they just gained three off the apple. We're at eight, facing three, four, five, six. Block one, take one, two, three, six from apple. One blocker's enough to not die. I'm just gonna jam, right? I guess I'm going to cast both of these at this point, sadly. I'm going to make a small thresher just to get closer to lethal, because we are in the endgame now. That tempting apple has sped things up. Last couple turns, whichever way it ends. Alright, so I don't have a flying blocker against the hover wings, but again, they just do that. That's seven in the sky. I block both the other creatures. Yeah. 
the Jorkadine. All right. If they find the removal to clear out one of my blockers, I'm dead. If they don't, I am fairly certain they are dead. This is going to be a huge board attacking next turn. Even if they can be at 7, if they don't throw the apple at me for lethal. So it all comes down to these last top decks. Okay, well. Mega dead. Ooh. It is expensive enough removal, actually. I didn't think of that. It's expensive enough removal, though, that they couldn't kill a blocker and uh, equip the hover wings and throw an apple at my face. So I have the tiniest chance in the world of breaking through here. Four damage. Super tiny chance. I have to, like, top deck a mountain so I can move Rabbit Battery to Jorkadine. And then maybe that's where it's at. Something like that. If they get another turn, we're so dead. Cityscape Leveler is just another Sky Sky Sovereign style bomber where it's like creature plus removal. Just pops off like crazy. Okay. I mean, this is an eight power trampler, so I guess I was going to say that's two one ones. That's something. No, it's not. Not against an eight power trampler. Okay, so block, 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 block. Block, 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 take one. Yeah. They can just block the trampler with their 8-8. Eight, eight. I'm not seeing any way to lethal here. If we top deck the mountain, I could have a big trampling Jorkadine. So I have two separate tramplers, and maybe that was where it's at, but obviously we didn't top deck the mountain. We have nowhere near enough toughness to survive, especially because they can just hover wings the leveler and kill us that way. Shoot. So I can haste a cohort, but that's actually technically less damage. I think. Because then they just trump block the four power creature. I mean, double buff gremlins is something, I guess. And I've still got another hourglass to think this out. Can't haste Jorkadine, so I have to play this, and then I can haste one of these if I want. So they have to block Gremlins with Cityscape Leveler, uh, but then they can unearth it and kill me. Um, so block there. Block three. Block two. Block two. They take like one damage from Rabbit Battery. Yeah, they're very much not dead. I guess they need one more mana to actually unearth the leveler. I don't know. Almost 100% certain they just survive and then kill us, but we'll see. They are forced to lose the leveler here. And technically, they don't have 8 mana for it. They just had 7 mana for it because of Foundry Inspector, so... If they do not have a basic, there is the tiniest chance in the world that they don't kill us here. Although, hold up. I completely forgot the rabbit battery unconfigures. So I actually have two chump blockers. So they can unearth it, blow up one of my chump blockers. I chump with one of them, take seven go to one life if they play a basic. So I'm alive with one life to a basic land, and they don't have the basics. They are KO Mender. And set up blocks instead. It's Foundry Inspector. I think Cohort can get there. They can block Cohort and Thresher, take two. They go to one. Jorkadine with haste because of the trample can probably get there. Yeah. See, a four power trampler. Maybe this is how we do it. I do draw a card off of doing this. I think that's it, right? They can block there, take one trample damage, block there, and then take lethal. That's dead. Oh my god.
insanely close game. Basically like a one mana off kind of game where we were in a really, really rough spot had they had one more mana. But again, because I had the battery and the servo, I technically could have survived at one life and then killed them on the crackback. If, even if they could un unearth the cityscape leveler. Spicy back and forth there. They do have one mana up. Because of the prototype. I don't think that could do anything. But they are still thinking. So maybe. It looks like it cannot. Incredibly close game of magic. But we get there once again. For the 3-0 undefeated start to the draft. Guaranteeing at least a 50-50 run. As we head into game 4. All right, here we are for game four on the draw. Pretty excellent opener. I didn't notice the lack of a mountain. You know, sometimes you brain fart. Pretty solid opener. Pretty okay opener. On the draw, I don't think it's an incredibly greedy keep, but uh, it is on that razor's edge where I, I probably would have mulliganed if I noticed the lack of a mountain. But we've got Blade and Combat Thresher pretty much locked in here. Since we top decked the planes, we do have both of these locked in, and the Thresher draws us a card looking for the mountain. Uh oh. Oh, there is the red source. A bone splitter on a lifelinker is pretty filthy. Let's go for the Ancestral Blade. That's going to be the better trade into the Arcbound Mouser, because we leave something behind after trading off. And the Mouser is only going to be one toughness anyway. There's their War Whip. Oh my god, and it it's free to equip now, so they just have a 4-2 double strike. Well... Um... Oh, I can just play my own War Whip. We block their double strike with my double strike, I guess. Feels a little bit better than uh, Welding Sparksing this early on just a token for now. Because again, later, if they have the mana, they can just put all of this equipment onto some other better creature anyway. Visionary Augmenter. Alright, now they're going to have plenty of creatures around to move all the equipment to. And it's a snap block immediately. And there's Bone Splitter on the Life Linker. Okay. Now they just double strike the lifelinker next turn and we are in pain because we don't have the mana to put our war whip on yet. Guess that means I have to welding sparks now. But then if I hold up the mana for welding sparks and they put war whip on somebody else, I'm just taking a lot. I think I'm still going to do it. I guess I could just play Combat Thresher, actually, because they don't have any two toughness creatures. Yeah, this way I've got something that can block and trade with any double striker. That is actually a solid plan there. God dang it. If I did the Welding Sparks plan, I could have shot the Mouser when they cast the other one. So they wouldn't have two counters on one of them. Ooh, okay. Changed my mind. It's actually a good thing I haven't done it yet, because we are going to need to Welding Sparks the Barricade Breaker. We are 100% going to need to Welding Sparks the Barricade Breaker. I probably should have used... Oh wait, it's free to move this, isn't it? It is free to move this. Okay, never mind. Since I probably should have moved this to the double striker, uh, but they didn't have a two toughness creature at the time. And I guess if it's free to equip, it's probably better to have a two two and a one one double strike than a one one and a two two double strike just to spread out the threats there. Okay, so I'm definitely holding up welding sparks now. I have three artifacts, so it is six damage. So, since we need to hold that up, our only play is our two-mana play of Upriser Renegade. Um, let's get the free equip onto the Thresher. 
and hold up welding sparks on blocks. Really weird having to be like the full defense road here. So Inventor's Fair, they can grab the best artifact out of their deck and put it into their hand now. So they're going to find some other bomb and things are going to get gross. They're already kind of gross, but we've got the removal to stop the first very gross thing of the 9-5 double strike. <laughs> But who knows what's coming next. Well, I've got Cloud Guard and Cohort. We can work towards an Ambitious Assault being a really big deal. I actually kind of want to start with the Flyer here. Because that can start attacking and chipping in for a tiny bit of damage. Before we go for the full-on Assault. To make Assault more likely to get close to lethal. Still not that likely. Visionary Augmenter, three creatures off the one body, has already cluttered up the board so much for their blocks. Alright, Mir and Bardish. It's pretty fine. Really expensive one to move around. I guess with War Whip on board, it's not that bad. Three mana. Okay, didn't hit a land. I actually would not have hated a land here to be able to hold up Assault so I could block with like a 5 power double strike. That would have been pretty sweet. But this is pretty fine still. Just got so many creatures we can just trump if we need to or we just take 4. And then they'll have less creatures for their blocks on the crackback. So five there. Three creatures get in. We can do like nine damage to the minimum. Ooh, actually Vigilant Double Strike is going to be really disgusting. I'm surprised they didn't also move War Whip. They must have a spell in their hand then to cast here. Uh, this is worth it because we can still attack just as hard next turn because I can just unearth an assault. Oh boy, yeah, they had a 10 10 in hand. Good grief. Uh, oh well. This. 6-3 Vigilant Lifelink Double Striker is going to completely win them the game if I don't have Ambitious Assault mana up to make Thresher big enough to trade into that. So I need to Ambitious Assault on blocks still. So I need to hold 3 mana up. And hold up the Thresher. And not cast Ambitious Assault right now. So I could unearth Cohort and not attack with it just to get a 1-1. One, one. I don't think I want to do that. We could have gone for it here and just really hoped that they blocked with the mouser. But then if they didn't, we would just lose. Take 10. Casually take 10. I 
I guess that's probably where we had a shot there. We just needed them to misplay on their block with the Ambitious Assault. Because otherwise we are just so far behind here, even if they lose the lifelinker there at 22. Don't think we can outrace here, but we've got Mortar Pod shenanigans coming in hot now as well. And Mortar Pod only costs one mana to move around. We can keep chumping and shooting with Mortar Pod. It's actually really good against all these uh, one toughness cards. No, we could maybe get there. This is five mana. I have seven. I can spend five on this and cast the Mortar Pod. Think that's the play. No, we're we're still very much in this game. Over exaggerating. Over exaggerating how bad the not attacking ambitious assault was. I don't know where we're supposed to put this now, but I'm just gonna put it on a two two. I guess that makes Renegade a 7-3, so that's probably worth it. <laughs> Multiple different equipped creatures. Yeah, I don't know, this actually... Finding the Mortar Pod here and having the War Whip, of course, to give the Cloud Guard Double Strike looks like it might be working. And then this would be the safer way to have done things rather than hoping for a block that ends up in our favor with the Ambitious Assault. So maybe I was just wrong. Um, earlier. When I said that we should have just attack assaulted. Show me the trick. No trick. So a beautiful block for us. It's an arcbound whelp. Well, there's a flying chump blocker for our opponent. I could double more to pot it, sack two of my cards. Uh, with a cohort here, that might be actually a big deal. The amount of haste damage we can get here, maybe we can kill them if we mortar pod like crazy. Yeah, because if Renegade gets in, they're just going to die, right? So we actually just go to mortar pod town. So one mana, mortar pod, the summoning sick one one for sure. Shoot the three one. So six plus like seven there. Yeah, this is definitely lethal. Sacking all our one ones. Mortar pod. Actually just insane, maybe. I'm being able to move it around for only one man is a pretty big deal. That has made this more insane. Okay, now in the interest of making Renegade as insane as possible, we put all these on different cards. So that's seven there. And that's lethal, right? If I'm wrong, I'm dead. Okay, yeah, that, that's well over lethal. Good thing I'm not tremendously bad at math, at least in that circumstance. We are now four and O. Oh. Once again, really spicy one. Our opponent, we were on the mirror match there. Our opponent was on uh, some crazy equipment stuff as well. Uh, on the play, getting the aggro on us. We had to play the defensive, ambitious assault on blocks and stuff. So weird position to be in uh, when we've been on the aggressive pretty much every other game. But still get that nice back and forth victory in the end. And we are 4-0 and oh, heading into game 5. Here we are for game 5 with the Jorkadine Dream Curve. We don't, um, we don't, I don't know what I was going to say. We don't get to be on the play. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> My brain is mush lately, but hey, turns out you can still, uh, you can still get four wins in a row with mush brain. So we're cool with it. I kind of want to haste Jorkadine out next turn. So we don't play him right now. So we play the barbed spike to stay aggressive. Although, 
Eh. I'm gonna say, although we do trade into Oaken Siren with an attack here, it's probably worth it. There's so many artifact spells, this thing is just nuts. Vigilance attacker that can constantly tap for your spells. Yeah, I will, uh, I think, offer the Barbed Spike for Oaken Siren trade this turn. Alright, here we go. Straight to Value Town, baby. That's immediately going to draw us a card and hit for 5 million damage. And by 5 million, I mean 5. No blocks. <laughs> They're already at 12 and I have a Tempting Apple coming up. They're going to need some cheap removal here, but they've got a Mana Dork with the Oaken Siren, so... They could have the cheap removal, especially if they're attacking with Oak and Siren. But I guess our only ground creature has Trample, so that makes sense. They'd go for the attack. All right, Mirror Enforcer. Oh, why is this format so nutty? Well, Jorkanine is still a 5-5 attacker, so setting into the Enforcers is still not the worst. Um, If I steal one of them... Is it better? Steal one of them, send a 5-5 five, five in, they block with a 4-4. Four, four. See, they go 4-4 four, four and 1-2 there. I draw a card, they go 2-1 there, boom. I hit for 4, they're at 8. I feel like I have to save the apple. Yeah, I've got I've got Tempting Apple Mortar Pod, so if I can wait till I have 6 mana to steal their creature and sack it, that can be game winning. So... We probably just play the Cloud Guard right now. Offer Thopter for Oaken Siren trade here. Cool. means Cloud Guard can try to keep getting in if they don't play any more Flyers. Big bold attack, I'm cool with it. Give me that damage straight to my face. We have a surprising amount of damage that we can get out of nowhere with this hand. Alright, well Jorkadine already has incredible attacks. Um, so we can go Mortar Pod, and then I have two equipped creatures on board. They have four power total. If they block Jorkadine with everybody, then if I move Rabbit Battery around, um, Jorkadine will die. I still think it's worth saving the uh, Cloud Guard from dying to a single Siren here. Alright. This is 4-4 four, four Jorkadine, actually, not 5-5 five, five Jorkadine, but I kill two of the three cards. Think it's worth. I guess I could mortar pod to finish off the last siren to kill all three of those, but. And I only have one blocker for the two mirror enforcers. They're on blue, white, green, though. What are they going to have to add two power to the enforcers and shut off the 1 1? Oh, captured by Legax. Pacify my 1 1, put a plus and plus one counter on both enforcers, try to find lethal that way. Yeah, I'm not going to sack this mortar pod then, because that is a distinct possibility. They have Cogwork Wrestlers, disgusting no matter what. They do not. Cogwork Wrestlers, the one mana instant speed 1 2 that gives something minus 2 minus 0 till end of turn. So 
So again, the reason I didn't sack Mortarpod to finish the last Oak and Siren is because then I would be dead to captured by Legax, which is a green-white common. And when you are in green and white, it is a very powerful, very popular card. There's a pirate hat. Uh, so they're dead, right? We just tempting Apple their only flyer? Yep. We got there. There was some spookiness when they double mirror enforced us in one turn, but still just too many ways to... Oops. I lethaled with Ariat's tempting Apple. I'm going to shoot the face. Since I'm just going for lethal next turn anyway, I don't think the ground creature matters. They could cog regress their in response here, but they're still dead because we can throw the apple at them for three. And that is the 5-0 and o undefeated win streak to start off this draft. So we're getting tons of value here. 1600 gems out of the events and it costs 1500 to play we get to keep all of our random historic packs we open up super super sweet stuff but we'll see how far we can take it as we head into round six all right here we are on the play for round six we got that upriser renegade combo rolling out here so let's get that bad boy started attack with a three three on turn three all right, there's an Oaken Siren from our opponent for great mana. Uh-oh. No land drop here. We got plenty of two mana things to do, so it's not the absolute end of the world, but I'm a little sketched out. So if we miss on multiple land drops in a row, we could have an issue. Because even with all two mana cards in hand, it would be valuable to make it to four mana so we can cast two of them in one turn. And we don't have all two mana cards in hand. We have an actual four drop. Ooh, Palladium Mirror? Our opponent is just on Mega Ramp over there. Alright, there's another land for us. Um, Yeah, when they're on Mega Ramp, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, offer the Barbed Spike for Oak and Siren Trade to get rid of a tiny bit of their mana. And they don't take the trade, so there's something huge coming up. Hopefully it's something that dies to a single copy of Citizen's Arrest. But it might not be. Because, yeah, take 7, go to 10 means they like their mana ramp. And they want to keep it around. At least the Oaken Siren. The Palladium Mirror and Oaken Siren double block to trade into Renegade would not have been that great, even if they didn't need the mana too much. Since they'd have to lose two of their creatures just for one of ours, that only costs us two mana. Uprise or Renegade... Looking incredible here. Did a lot of work uh, last time as well. So, big ups to Upriser Renegade. Good stuff. It's Cloud Guard, another four mana card, so can't do anything with that. Uh, we can no longer attack in with the Barb Spiked Thopter. I can send in the Renegade, it trades with Arcanist's Owl. Not the greatest trade in the world, not the worst. If I move the Hexgold Halberd to the Renegade, it's only a 3-3, but it is a 3-3 first strike trample, which is something. I could just Citizens Arrest the Owl. That does solve the problem of Renegade's attacks as well as Barb Spike's attacks. Yeah, I don't love not having this for a bigger creature, but just a 3-3 is a big enough creature to make all of our attacks considerably worse. And just dealing with that solves every single attacking issue that we have here. Yeah, so they're just going to concede. Fair enough. We are now 6-0. Undefeated as we head into the final boss, so we've got three shots at getting the max prizes out of this event. And we might even get a full 7-0 undefeated run again. That would be super sick, but see how it pans out as we head into that final battle. Here we are for the final boss with a beautiful Sesame Street hand. Here we got one, two, three, four. So we keep that. Our opponent starts with Termin Vault Scourge, one of the best Termin plays in the format, but so is Three-Bit Inspector. I don't think it's quite as good as Vault Scourge, though, because there's a lot of great ways to juice that up, and Transmigrant's Crown is certainly one of them. Oh, thank all of the gods. 
there's the mortar pod. So now they can't do anything with the vault scourge. I could kill it right now to play around uh, the plus one plus one hexproof trick thing. I think I will. If I held off on the mortar pod, then I make it so if they ever try to equip it, we respond by killing it. But I think it's just a little safer, especially against green, to just kill that thing immediately while they're tapped out and they're on mono green so far. So Setting up the gremlins because we have four different cards that all come with an artifact in hand. So this is just a straight up three mana, four, three trample. No, they get to crown this one up, so they draw a card off of it no matter what. Uh, but I can still kill it with a mortar pod. Trade my Thraben Inspector into it, still worth it for sure. So we will do that here, which means uh, playing a two mana card instead of a three mana. Let's go for the Halberd here. I don't have anything I want to discard to the Mutt yet, and Halberd is an artifact as well. So Gremlins is already good. Draw your card so I can get rid of your three lifelink and keep the pressure on your life total. They're down to 11. There's the black source. Scrapwork Cohort, excellent card here. Multiple blockers. Mortar Pod, though, continuing to absolutely demolish. That's got to be the overperformer of the day at this point. For this game alone, honestly. I mean, look at this. They don't have the white source to unearth the cohort anyway, so might as well just clear it out so they can't kill salivating gremlins. Gross. And now they're down to five. Yeah, there's just so many good one toughness cards in the format. Vault Scourge and Scrapwork Cohort. Like, our opponent is on a good deck. These are all excellent cards. They've got the equipment to put on the Vault Scourges and stuff, but Mortar Pod just shreds so many of those good cards. You can still shred this 1 1 token and find lethal. I guess not quite lethal, right? Unless I hit an untapped land. Oh my god. Sure. Just hit the untapped land and mortar pod all the way to victory. Super nasty. I could unearth the mutt for lethal, but at this point, I think mortar pod has earned the kill. Oh, and our opponent concedes. I was going to hit for four and then sack something to mortar pod for the last point of damage. That game was 100% mortar pod's game. We've drafted a mortar pod or two in the past. I think we usually just ended up cutting them in the end. Um, because we were on some bigger decks, we didn't have so many cards that could make multiple bodies, and we don't have a ton of those here. We've got the artisan that was really good in that hand. We've got the cloud guard, and we have the scrapwork cohort, but that's it, right? We've got three or four cards that make multiple bodies. Um, but even without that stuff, like just the first germ to do one damage to a target and then leaving behind the equipment has been solid. I mean, Mortar Pod easily gets the overperformer reward for today. This is a card I don't think I'm going to cut nearly as frequently in the future. I'm going to be a lot more interested in running that. Because, yeah, I mean, we never got to do our Ember Keeper combo that we had like set up with it. Ember Keeper, probably the biggest underperformer, because I don't think we ever even cast this, because we always had stuff that was just better to play. And that was like my last second thing that I was considering cutting anyway. I guess because I was considering cutting it, it really can't be an underperformer. Was there anything that I really wanted to put in the deck that didn't end up actually being that crazy? Not really. I don't think we had an underperformer. I think everything did pretty good. Maybe Visions of Phyrexia, actually. I would have preferred just something that actually impacts the board, some kind of creature. We're aggressive enough, I think, that we didn't really have a game where we would have wanted to draw into Visions of Phyrexia. Not a single one of these games really got into a big late game top deck war where we uh, ran out of gas. Um, at least to the point where like drawing into a scrapwork cohort or something would have been worse than Visions. Like just another good creature like a cohort or a cloud guard would have always been pretty much just as good as drawing into Visions in any of those games. So that's actually probably the biggest underperformer because we did draft that somewhat highly. I don't remember how highly. Was that a pack one? Like a pack two pick one or something? I don't remember. We took it early-ish. But anyways, Mortar Pod is the big star of the show here. The big card that performed way differently than I thought it would. I thought it was going to be just decent here. 
um, and it was incredible. It was pivotal in that last victory and several others. It put in a lot of work for us, clearing a lot of stuff out of the way with the amount of good one toughness cards there are. And just having ways to get around really cluttered board states and still find the last four or five points of damage is nice too. If they have a million blockers on board, well, now you can just start sacking your whole board to shoot them in the face. So really cool, really powerful stuff from the deck as a whole, um, and especially Border Pod as well. It's going to give us a seven win undefeated run for today's draft. Very, very sweet one. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in seeing more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.